Welcome everybody, it is Technical Tuesdays and yes it has been a while since our last episode but here today we have a very very special volume as it is now volume 40. That's right, it's been a long five weeks since our last Technical Tuesday, um, but hopefully in the meantime you've enjoyed some of the vlogs that I've put out there, um, I've received you know, a lot of great feedback for them, and we will keep the vlogs going. However, the core of Astro FX YouTube videos are of course the technicals, and we are back again for number 40, and we have a great interview today for you lined up. Yeah, over the past five weeks we have in fact had a massive amount of new subscribers, we're nearly touching 24,000 now, so thank you very much to everybody out there who supports our work so for you new viewers and subscribers let us just in reintroduce ourselves so I'm Sean and I'm Nat and we are Astro FX and we have over 14 years combined experience in the foreign exchange market that's right just over seven years each now and um, we have actually been teaching and helping other people for just over one and a half years that's right now whilst teaching um, we are fortunate enough to meet br uh, tons of brilliant brilliant people from different backgrounds different cultures different parts of the world and of course different experiences and for technical Tuesdays volume 40 we want to do something special so we've actually thought to ourselves we want to introduce some of our favorite students all to all of you guys um, so approaching Christmas now we've actually got a few of our students all lined up in which we're gonna have an interview with them via Skype screen recorded for all you guys to see in which they can share their story share their experiences and hopefully not only you can you learn from our technicals but hopefully you can learn a lot of lessons from our students indeed so to Today, guys, we're going to be introducing many of you to one of our students named Adrian, also known on Instagram as Seven Bags a Week. Now, that's right, Seven Bags a Week. We will be getting to the bottom of that name very shortly. You may have seen us repost him on the AstroFX Instagram, mm. trading from his lovely um, house in Marbella. That's right. Now, Adrian came on the course, I think it's the 23rd of April, so it's been roughly about six months. Uh, before he came in, he actually had two years prior experience now in that experience unfortunately fell for a very very common trap in the market which of course is signal services um, you know we talked about them for a long time ever since we began these videos we've always tried to uh, steer people clear of signals however you know he got involved in signals of course like many people had some success during the start then again stuff came crashing down he got in contact with us remember he called our office phone we had a nice conversation he just said right guys I'm, I'm tired of relying on anyone I want to be able to look at the market and analyze myself came along with the course and here we are um, you know a few months later sharing an interview with him yeah so let's just give a few facts uh, regarding Adrian and his trading so um he came in he did the course and prior as Nats mentioned he was trading a live account now Adrian had been trading for nearly two years following somebody else in which it was all up and down he shared all of his account history with myself um, and we have so many students from various backgrounds, some who are completely fresh to the market. However, with Adrian, we allowed him to go on trading live due to, um, you know, he was very, very used to the psychology aspect of handling real money. He understood wins, losses, and, you know, just dealing with everything on the whole. So he went back into his live account and he's made some extremely uh, great money from uh, various accounts. That's right. So let's give you guys some numbers. So Adrian, once uh, leaving the course of Again, we've monitored his progress just like we do with all of our students and he's been trading two accounts one account uh, well, you know what let me actually give you the total that he's made in total he's actually made more than fifteen thousand pound profit now again to some people out there that might not be the most amount of money in the world but let, let me tell you this it was from a small account which anyone any one of the viewers that hopefully watch this video can achieve themselves so yeah fifteen thousand pound profit and he's again he's made up from two separate accounts on one account, he's actually had more of a safe account in which he started with £1,000 and it's currently around about £5,000 and that's a 400% increase. His second account, he started with £7,200 which currently sets at £20,000 which again is about 170% increase which is absolutely phenomenal. You know, extremely proud of him. You know, his story is a lot like some of our other students but today's Adrian's day. And you know what, we're not just gonna talk about his numbers and his statistics of his trading. When we actually do a carry on interview in a minute, we're actually gonna share his screen and share his account history, which many people, you know, haven't really seen done before, except for me and Sean when we shared our account history once upon a time a few months ago. But today we're gonna be sharing Adrian so you can see the profit for yourself. 
Indeed. So throughout the interview, we're going to, going to be um, asking Adrian some questions. Um, we're going to be listening to some of his stories, his ups, his downs, again, to give you guys some motivation and maybe you can relate to some of uh, Adrian's experiences. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be covering maybe um, his last few traits and let him, let him actually share some of his own analysis and what he thinks is going to happen in the market for the week ahead. So I hope you guys enjoy the Skype interview and yeah, let's get started. Okay, we're on. Okay. Welcome Adrian. Thank you for joining us for the first ever. Um, do you want to say hello to the thousands of people that will hopefully watch this? Hi everybody. Nice to be here. Thank you. Uh, so how's your day going so far? Uh, how's trading and how are you? Yeah, all good, thanks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's going well. You know, it's been a bit of a journey. Um, typically, trade from my office. I've uh, got a daytime job in the business. So, uh, the trade industry is nice in the background as of when. And uh, yeah, all good. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, if you would like to just let everybody know exactly how you were introduced to the market, where you actually came across the market, and uh, how you found Astro FX. Okay. Well, begin, uh, sorry, I found out about Forex, obviously, through uh, possibly emails, websites, you know, and all the uh, glitzy uh, promises of learning how to trade, mm -hmm. you know, making thousands of pounds worth of money and so on. So I promise, yeah, that's probably what attracted me initially. And because we import from the States, we also buy a lot of, it was good that I thought, well, you know, let's, let's learn how to add them on. We can exchange favorably and it'll help me that way. Um, so, yeah, that's how I got really introduced to, to Forex. Uh, found Astro FX through Instagram, I believe, which obviously linked through to the Tech Tuesdays and away we went from there. Okay, um, so like, how was your journey before coming in? Because remember you mentioned something to do with a, a signal service, how you got trapped in there? Yeah, I, I think it's part and parcel of what we do with trading is that we buy all the books and the CDs and the online seminars and the <laughs> signal services, you know, and you know, we, we lose a few of our shirts and so on, blown up accounts. So I went through all that process. And just before the Astro FX course, um, service that yeah. specialised in Euro US dollar, uh, went really well. Um, they only traded once per day, on the, I believe, on the opening. Um, turned an account from two thousand pounds to fourteen thousand pounds. Started looking at Lamborghinis, <laughs> white ones in particular, you know. And then it all started going pear shaped, you know. And this, I could see a difference. But sort of entering trades twice, three times a day, and mm. chasing losses. That's previous on the point. So. Um, that was really, you know, what happened prior to who uh, could mentor me that was actually making yeah. making the success of it. So you didn't really want to rely on anyone, and did the, you know the signal service damage your account heavily, or what happened there? Uh, signal, so yeah, it, it crashed in off. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> when, I, when I came to Astro, you, 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 well, you, you know, sure you remember as well. It, yeah. you know, we went into a live account to set up some trades with uh, we analysed uh, at the end of the course. So there was only half of it left, but. Half better than nothing, and uh, that was yeah from the, from the ground up. That's where we're in from there. Yeah, because I remember when we uh, went through your MetaTrader account history on your live account. Um, you know, you got it to the fourteen felt okay, which is which many traders can actually relate to that making a boatload of money and then crushing it in half, if not you know two thirds of the account. Would you say that? Um, because of your great winning streak following your signal provider, did you get a little bit overconfident and start doing bigger lot sizes um, and so on? Yeah, definitely overconfidence came in. I, I, that's one of the mistakes I should have taken some out because that one, that would have been protected, and two, it would have reinforced mentally that what we're doing is correct and so on, which we, you know, we start, start to do now. But um, yeah, I think so. I think you start to see the big numbers and you, you, you feel as though uh, you just can't get this wrong, you know, you know, every day we make money, of yeah. course, you know, yeah. the market is, is a ferocious dragon, it will take you one day, so um, that's basically what happened, you know, so, yeah, yeah. so the advice really is to take, take some profits, you know, so you can't give it back to the market, even if you, you made the mistake of doing that. That's some good advice, some good advice, uh, so it's been about six months since you came on the course, do you want to just kind of, you know, from the few days in our office that we actually spent, do you want to just kind of talk about your experiences, uh, what did you find helpful, and what did you take away from it? Okay, well, first, what I took away from the course was uh, a training plan. You know, um, we've now got a sort of daily routine where we break the charts down. You know, we look at it from monthly, week, daily, look at the bias, see where we're at, and then we go in on the daily to look for the, uh, the confluences that, that dictate the, the trades. But um, so that, that is a training plan is what we got. 
also learnt how to sit on our hands. You know, we don't have to trade every day. In fact, really, four or five decent trades a month is all we need. You know, which before I was like four or five a week at least. You know, so yeah. it's, it's, it just sort of chilled it everything out. It raised all the bad stuff, hopefully, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a fresh start for me. Yeah. So with that being said, you know, four or five trades a day, and we've been in that position, if not worse. Uh, were you actually logging any of those trades? As you were going by and then reviewing them, you know, even if they were wins or losses, uh, not before the course. No, okay. only the history on on your account. But now that I've got a trading log, you know, that's what you do, I do do. You know, when there's nothing to do, there is something to do. You go back and look at the trades where they went wrong. What was it me or or what? You know, mm. and sometimes you can see well, everything was stacked up. It's just the way the market went. Yeah, we couldn't do any more. Um, even if you, you, you write 75% of the time out of 100, 100 trades, you're going to get it wrong 25 times. So yeah. I look at it now as a business. You know, you yeah. get losing trade, you just pay the rent. That's good, that's good. Uh, do you want to maybe share your uh, journey, you know, maybe month one, month two, month three, etc., from when after you left the course? Because, you know, I remember there were some parts where you kind of got your trading together, and how has it been going since then? Yeah, I mean, when I went from the course, um, it was a, bit, a little bit of information overlap because there's a lot to try and remember from the three days, but of course, the trading book. So I just basically did it another four more times. But, you know, it, that, that's what I went away and, and did. Um, it's just been a, a lot more relaxed sort of thing that we, that we do now. Okay, so yeah, how was month one? How was month two? And, you know, how did you get the struggles? Okay, well, it was, um, we, we were trading, but just cautiously because I was trying to you know, learn, uh, just, just reinforce everything that that we'd learn. Learn, you know, month two, it just got better. Uh, and up, up until recently, where you know we, we just sort of cross our cross reference all our trades now with mm-hmm. um, with the members area, uh, or even on the Tech Tuesdays, you know, just to make sure I'm lining up everything. Uh, key levels, yeah, monthly, weekly key levels is absolutely crucial to get right, and it's nice to see that that lines up with what you two guys are doing. Yeah, brilliant. So, with that being said, because in the introduction to Technical Tuesdays, this uh, 40th volume, we did mention that. Um, you came to us trading live, as we've already mentioned, but we have also, because on our third day, um, you know, gained a lot more understanding into price action. We actually spotted the GBP USD uh, long buy opportunity, and you actually had the confidence to place that trade on your live account. So can you just tell everybody how that trade actually went? Because uh, we uh, gained quite a bit from that also. Quite a lively trade, you know, it's, it just reinforced what we did on the course work, which was great for, for confidence. Um, I can't remember what percentage of, of my course fees it covered, but it covered a good chunk of it, which was a good thing, you know. So, it, yeah, it was spot on. It, was, it just lined everything up that we'd, that we'd set up. It was yeah. a proper trade, yeah. real money. Yeah, I remember we had a you know a good discussion on the first day about how you know just because of who you are and you know your trading experience that you luckily were already kind of okay with dealing with losses. So you know, whereas a lot of other students, we do recommend them trading demo. You know, I think it much much favoured you going away and trading live. And you know, the one good thing was, you know, the amount of money you've made has actually not been from the massive account, has it? Because you've had, I think you had two different accounts, is it? That's right. Yeah, I run two, run two accounts. Uh, one is the main one where I just re- you know, stick religiously to the, tra- the trading rules. The other one is a bit naughty because I do. Mm. Trade more per pay, you know, rather than the 3%, maybe I'm trading 10%, which is crazy. But the reason about being or our response to, to larger trades, I posted one on Instagram uh, recently, it was £25 a pit, and a uh, heart beating as you put it on. So, yeah, we're out of the comfort zone, but I just wanted to see how I would um, deal with it emotionally on, on bigger trades. And what I found straight away is that I'm not chasing the 50 uh, trades now. I'm, I'm quite happy with just a few pips because the money's there. So, it, you know, psychologically, I'm learning from that. I've been running two accounts, but uh, the right thing to do, obviously, is, is, is uh, the three percent maximum, really. Yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, that's why I did that. Cool. Uh, just just to recap on that, could you just let everybody know um, how much you've actually made in total on both of the accounts? Um, I'm around twelve thousand pounds up uh, so far. So you know, it's, it fluctuates. You know, we. Mm-hmm. we, we Go down, then we go back up. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm well, at, well, at, you know, ahead of what I set myself for this year. Yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, you, you, I think you've been a little bit more than that, but then you come back down. But yeah, you know, from where you left, again, just from your account size, you know, I think you had one account which was about 7,000, one which you said 1,000. So from there, again, you know, you can see the potential in, you know, what you're going to do in the next six months and the six months after that is just unbelievable, right? It, it is, yeah. Like, like I say, what's, what it's all about for myself is learning how to create 500 pips per month. It doesn't have to be that. Level. 
And I think that if once you've mastered to be training hundred pounds a pit or a pound a pit, yeah. then you know you do you do whatever the size of the can it takes. But you know that's that's where I'm at. I need to learn how to do the five hundred pips with closer uh, if we don't hit the target. So um, yeah, I mean when you compound it over the next six to twelve months from from the, the bigger of the two accounts that I've got. It's, it's brilliant, it's exciting, but it's, again, you've got to stay disciplined and just level headed and socially. That's it. You know, luckily, I think we managed to merge your trading plan with ours, and you know, you're coming out, so that's fantastic. Um, you know, whether you be here in the UK or, you know, your lovely house in Marbella, do you want to kind of just talk about, you know, your average day as a trader? Okay, well, start every morning at 7 a.m. Um, day, we look at the, uh, the charts, we're breaking, you know, look at where we are monthly, daily, weekly, to see which buyers. And we start doing this that we talk to do on the course uh, mm. from, from the daily. Okay. Yeah, that's like I say, it's, it's nice. You know, again on Insta, we, we put pictures of me doing it by the pool. I was doing <laughs> live trades from the pool, living the dream. You know, it's yeah. um, not a multi-millionaire from trading forex yet, but you know, that's mm. again getting a feel of you get it right. So, mm. really bothered about the pounds per pips at the minute. It's all about just getting those pips. Mm being able to do it wherever you want to do it. That's good so to kind of run your business alongside that throughout, haven't you, as well? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just runs in the background. Like I say, I have an hour before I'm into the office. Um, it's like today, you know, I'm a big believer of setting up what's already made um, a decision where I'm entering a trade. I can set the time loss in, um, you know, the, the target level to get at. And, yeah, it just runs itself. You can easily do it with, with the job. you just got to set that chart reading time. Um, and in the early evenings, I'll just have a look at what's happening in the day and see mm -hmm. whatever else is, is starting to line up. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, could you tell everybody what are what, what what's maybe the best thing you've learned, um, maybe about yourself in terms of psychology since you've actually left the course? Um, what's learning the, what? to sit on your hands, yeah. not, not to trade every day. You don't need mm. to do that every day. Um, yeah. Four or five trades a month is, is all you need. The right mm. ones, you know. So, uh, as we said earlier, rather than four or five times a day or, or, or whatever, you know, you just don't need to do that. So. That sitting on the hands is, is, is the biggest one. Yeah. Uh, and, and discipline and patience, you know, I've got two stickers left and right on my screen. One says discipline, one says patience, you know. Uh -huh. And I'm not a patient person naturally, but yeah. I've learned, you know, and sometimes I can see a perfect trade set up, but I don't take it just so I know I've, I'm in control and I've got discipline. There's nothing wrong with the trade at all. I just think, right, this one, the trade, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's yeah. it. No, I definitely remember. It was a bit of a milestone. I remember when you were kind of uh, had texted me saying, you know what, now I've actually finally realised the less trades is much better for me. And I think that definitely was a change in your trading. I think that just came again from you just kind of going through your own trial and errors, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, it is. But it's just finding your own comfort uh, levels. I know, um, for, for example, NFP, I, I don't trade those. I'm close to business that day because when I used to try and trade the NFP, you'd be nervous, you know, your heart's pounding. You just don't need to do those sort of trades. So I'm sure it's pretty good that I never can make them make money from that way but the, the relaxed approach that we've done on the course is that we get, we're just looking for four or five quality trades everything's automated with stop loss and take profits etc and that's what we do you know there's no uh, no big news alerts for trades for me oh that's good that's good um so do you want to uh, just kind of share maybe you know kind of a good lesson for everyone that's actually watching this video about what they might be able to take away just from your journey so far in the market yeah, okay, well, I actually put some pointers down. I mean, from the course, formulate a trading plan. You know, you, you need something. You need to sort of establish you're trying to achieve uh, and a plan of how you're going to, going to achieve that. Um, learn to sit on your hands. You don't need to trade every day you know, or even every week. You know, it's all about getting, you know, a set amount of pips that you're happy with. Uh, forget about the money. It's just, it's just about learning the craft of, of obtaining the pips. Patience and discipline, as I mentioned, left and right of your screen. Stick those on, stick your labels and, you know, they're, they're the two main things. Just keep reminding yourself, you're tempted. It's all about the pace. It's all about the discipline, making sure the trades are, uh, are, are all lined up. And again, it's, it's all about the pips. You know, concentrate the pips and the money. Also. That's good. Now, before we get into the analysis, because, you know, I feel hopefully we've answered a lot of great questions for a lot of people. Do you want to share where the Instagram name came from? The famous <laughs> uh, seven bags a week, which will be um, in our bio uh, for this video. But do you want to share where the kind of name came from? Seven bags of sand. Grand, so seven grand a week. I want to make some decent money for it. So yes, yeah, seven grand a week uh, in, in cash is, is what I'm trading for. Hmm. Um, and yeah, I'll, I think I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. but again, myself that yeah, um, you know has a little target for you within yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll look at that. And uh, the minute I'm going to live up to it, so you know, I'm just uh, I'm getting there. Hopefully, you've answered a lot of questions that people, you know, have about our students, and you know, we've um, talked about hopefully a lot of lessons which you can pass on to a lot of people. And you know what? Um, I think we we discussed beforehand. You're wearing some um, USD CAD analysis, which is from your prior trade, right? Absolutely, yeah. It was one of the latest ones. I uh, believe it was just sitting in cash in a minute, but uh, it, was, it, was, yeah, it was one that we've done recently, uh, trade, and what I got out, and where we go from there, yeah. Okay, brilliant. So I'm just going to connect to your screen. Um, okay, Adrian, everybody can see your screen. Um, well, if you would like to just go through the technical uh, reasons, if you will, why you entered, um, you know, importantly, why you actually um, took the trade out. Okay. Well, from here, obviously, the original uh, trend line was from previous analysis. We updated it to three touches, so we've got a proper trend line in place. Mm -hmm. uh, then I looked at this sort of area. We've got a early lined up nicely with the uh, 0.3825 Fibonacci. Um, so we've got that. You know, followed it all. We've got it got in about here, and then we, and that's because it's come up to some major resistance. My look, you know, I thought I'm happy where I'm at at the moment, and yeah. uh, we took the money out. So what was your what was your pip gain in total and what was your money? Money gain, uh, I put up on the Insta, I believe, it, or on, the, on the account that I take a bit more risk with. I think it took £250 out of that, out of that one trade. That's fantastic. So, uh, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, so your uh, USD CAD analysis does, in fact, line up with ours too. You those in the formation. We have the monthly, weekly and daily, all giving us bullish averages. We have strong, strong bullish confluence there. Um, what do you think, obviously we have economics um, out this week, so we have to be careful, but what is your viewpoint next week or two weeks ahead? Well, what I'll be looking at now is off the support level here, or if we break through, then it's going to go, just pull this down, go up to, to distance. So, on your hands, wait and see where we're, and we made our line again, because the mental stuff that they do. The most recent high or low, which is um, highlighted green, where you were actually where you entered. You know, we are expected to go up and make a new higher high. Had we're looking at maybe a four hundred, uh, considering the last high or low in the sequence to make a new higher high. Uh, we would really, really like to see maybe a weekly and a daily close above that zone uh, before maybe considering any further long trades. Uh, with that being said, the next target to the upside will probably be that Fibonacci, okay, 1.3840, 1.3850. So, yeah, brilliant analysis overall. Yeah, and you can't really complain at uh, closing that uh, trade at £1,200 profit. So, uh, yeah, it's time to sit on your hands and let's see where this currency pair goes. Uh, thank you for the interview. Uh, do you mind, just for motivational purposes, for all of those that are watching the video, do you mind just sharing uh, one of your few accounts with us just to talk us through it? Yeah, sure, yeah. Just uh, click on to uh, MetaTrade. Yeah, Meta okay, this is one of the accounts where... Uh, I don't know, start from down here. We, we put, a, I think, we had a couple of thousand pound in there, we're using the signal services, and like I say, it was going grey, then it went down to nothing, and so on, and so on. So, topped it back up, popped it back in, uh, you know, to top it back up, so we could trade with the with the Astro stuff, and then we've made uh, four seven six on this particular card, gives me a balance down here of eight one two six currently on this one. So, yeah, that one's we've revived it, got it back. Yeah, but no, so that's brilliant. That's that's just one of your accounts of a few, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just spread it around for different sort of risk profiles and so on. No, that's fantastic. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for the interview overall. Um, you know, we've had a good time. Hopefully, a lot of uh, the information will get used by a lot of traders from along across the world and find it very useful. And um, as always, hopefully, we'll get to catch up with you next month and uh, you can um, fill us in on your trading then. Okay, yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, thanks for inviting me and I'll uh, keep you all updated. Thanks okay, for that. we'll see you very soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Cheers. Bye. Now everybody, Bye -bye. due to the video not being as crisp and clear as we would have expected, we felt like we owed you something. Okay, so what we're going to give to you guys is a roundup of four or five currency pairs for the next week ahead. We do apologize, however, we're getting down um, to the nitty gritty of the technical issue as we have another interview lined up for next week. So I'm just going to get straight to it. I'm going to cover gold, EU, GU, AU. USD, JPY, and also Euro Pound. So I'm just going to start over on Euro USD. Now it's been a while, don't get me wrong, since we last covered some technicals. Five weeks to be exact. And a lot, a lot has happened in that um, period of time. Euro USD in front of us right now, um, we're currently just sat on the daily time frame. 
Daily time frame, Euro USD. The last trade we actually did on this pair was, in fact, around here. And many of you guys may remember, our, our close followers, that we did, in fact, go long upon a break of this trend line here. Now, when price did accelerate towards the 1.4500s, 1.1500s, sorry, um, we didn't, I was it personally expecting a breakthrough. However, we did, in fact, get the reversal in the resistance zone and price declined. Um, quite a substantial amount. Now, um, on well, my personal strategy, I look at some moving averages at times, um, and these moving averages are actually telling me that this is in fact in a downtrend. Now, overall, okay, I was quite um, ambitious with this move here. If you, and then you guys can remember the Fibonacci move that I called this at, up to 1.1700 and this one also. But now I have to say that Euro uh, price action is in fact displaying bearish uh, momentum. Now we have in fact been below 1.1500. I say below, you know, on a weekly close, on a weekly basis uh, since nearly the beginning of the year. So it's been quite a substantial time um, since we've been trapped between this 1000 pip range. Currently trading at 1.0637, as you can see right here. And we broke through my daily support level, we broke through two trend lines, we broke through the weekly support level, 1.1000. 1 so where's where's the euro going right now? Now, the price action suggests, on the grand scheme of things, that um, we are highly, highly likely to see a new lower low. Okay. I did a post last week. We haven't been too active recently. We've, um, we've had a many, many things that we've been busy with. Now, um, yeah, as I was saying, we had a, a post that, that we put out there on Instagram and Twitter that suggested EURUSD was going to come back down to 1.0500, the, the, the next downside level. Now, to be specific, if we look over here, uh, 1.0459. Um, Rules of price section. If we were, if we are making lower highs, you know, since since February, since we've been since we've been trading through uh, and bouncing off the, the barriers of this range, we are in fact expected to make a new low past this level. So I do believe we've got a minimum of 150 ish pips to, to decline on the euro USD. Thursday we have some ECB uh, meeting, and then we have Draghi's speech on Friday also. Could they be catalysts for the 1.0500 to break? Who knows? Potentially. Where would your USD go if this level's broken? Well, I can maybe tell you we could see something like this. We could potentially see a break straight through here. New lows. We could see a pullback perhaps. And then a continuation to this level here. Our weekly support 1.0500. Many, many people have been saying this for a long, long time. And, you know, just to put it out there, this is when we were trading around these zones, even though price action didn't really suggest that level. That's why I took no notice and I wanted to just focus on maybe the last few weeks, uh, maybe the last one or two months of price action. But now, yes, I have to say that this is bearish as hell. So this is the current scenario on, on, on Euro USD right now. Um, I know many, many people are short in this pair. Thursday, Friday could be the catalyst just to break this 1.0500. So let's expect perhaps a weekly close below 1.0500. Who knows? That is my analysis. I don't need to go into further. You know, I'll flick over to the weekly just to get um, a weekly observation slash perspective as to what's going on here. As you can see, we rolled over. This could be considered as an evening star. Came through. Doji. On weekly support, we got a little bit higher and dragged the price back down. We could close below daily support. Last week's candle was, in fact, I would I would say that's a spinning top again, indecisive, slow down, uh, a little bit 50/50, and then this week we are in fact currently declining, declining, declining. So yeah, get your cocktails at the ready, guys. Um, your USD will go in lower finally going to go lower, um, all the way to one. When it hits one, I would probably suggest to take a step back on your analysis and maybe exit your trades as well, if we do see that, okay? Remember, this analysis is to go hand-in-hand hand with your current market initiative. 
and technical perspective and even fundamental perspective. So don't take it all as 100%. I'm just trading off and giving my analytical viewpoint um, in regards to exactly what I see here on the euro. So there you go, guys. Clean, simple analysis, straightforward as always. Euro USD, potentially a weekly close below here. We could see a rollover back up as a retest of that zone and go even lower. So um, yeah, that's one to watch that. Going over to GBP USD on the other hand, um, recently it's been a mess, a huge mess. We were in fact looking, I remember five weeks ago when we did the last Technical Tuesdays, this was one of the Fibonacci's uh, which was valid at the time. ABC here off the 61.8, we have a target down here and also um, and a target down here. The one thing I would say about GBP USD is that from our recent lower highs being formed, lower lows being formed, this, this, all of this price action, again capped by 1.55. We, uh, oh, if we just uh, take this into consideration also, 1.5250 broke through, we're retesting it as resistance now, as we can see, one, two, four candlesticks. Today, we haven't closed yet today, but we've been all over the place today. Uh, lows of today, 1.5155, so we have popped up about 60, 70 pips from that low since. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I can consider this, but I know technical, from a technical uh, perspective that this Fibonacci, the 127% uh, extension, has not actually been fulfilled technically, um, but this lines up perfectly with the monthly support at 1.5. Now, um, just two ways this can go. This can roll back over and it can, in fact, retest this zone to make an, a new low. It could break through all the way down here, okay, at the 1.4760 region. Or we could see a break back above, and I posted this on Instagram yesterday and also Twitter. Uh, we could see a break up and beyond, breaking this trend line, breaking this daily area of resistance. And this is, these are my notes from the post that I did yesterday. 1.5380 resistance. Once broken, we can maybe look for longs. What time frame? Again, daily. The market has been relatively choppy, so I don't really want to focus on anything below four hour personally. Uh, but yeah, we would need a daily break. Um, a daily break above, exactly where that line's already placed. We have target zones. First target zone, 1.5750. We have a break of that target zone. We could see 1.5990 slash 1.6. So bear that in mind, guys. We do need further confirmation and uh, to. Um, for an entry on GBP USD, for the long haul, both um, opportunities I favour the upside myself. However, the downside as well, you know, the technicals uh, are given confluences for either side of the trade. So what we, what we just need to do is sit on our hands here. We need to sit on our hands and await further confirmation. We have the FOMC also Wednesday. So uh, in regards to actually placing trades, I will probably wait until that is over. So that's GBP USD. Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar. Um, this one, this trade, this currency pair has been a bit all over the place recently. Now, 0 0.7 major barrier, uh, and we have this major barrier here as well. 0. Point, well, the lows of this pair, 0 0.6900, say. Nice round psychological level for, for Aussie dollar. We have three. Trend lines, inner, outer, long term, broke the inner, hit the outer, retested the inner, broke through the outer, came close to the long term, just, just up here. Now this, I've seen this price action before, you know, I've seen this price action before, it's slowly disintegrating, slowly disintegrating. We did in fact come back to retest 0.7, this monthly support area. Um, two scenarios on this, now we have to be very, very careful, but it, the price right in front of us now uh, paints the clear picture, the whole story. What we can actually wait for, similar to GBP USD, is in fact to break above the, the long-term trend line and this daily area here to go long. This will lead us back up to 0.7550. So if we don't, for a short opportunity here, we because this daily candle right now, it's it's indecisive. Wicks either end are unsure. Again, always, always, always wait until the, the candles have actually closed in order to make the trading decisions. However, these could also be considered as lower swing highs. We could get a rollover. If we break this monthly, monthly barrier of 0.7, I do believe 
we will see uh, tremendous uh, volatility to push us even further to make new lows. Maybe at 0.67, let's say 0.6750, bypassing this daily area support here. Okay, so they're the two scenarios on Aussie dollar. Um, price action's given us hints for both ways. You now we've got the lower highs here, lower highs here, and then we also have higher low, higher low. So it's you know, it's, it's relatively 50-50 um, right now, and as I just mentioned, sit on your hands, wait for it to come through, as when it does come through either way, either side, we can in fact make a decent amount of pips, which will make up for your waiting time. Going on to USDJPY, there's only one way I've, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned, actually I won't say I'm concerned, but okay, so breaking this down, um, simple format. This has been trapped here. This 115, 116s has been a major, major, major barrier for this pair. Now, um, we have our trend lines in order. I've kept some old trend lines on there as well from that past price section. We've recently broke my counter trend line here. We've recently been, this has been such an accurate level for so long for USD JPY. Um, I do believe we're going to see some USD strength um, in, in maybe for the next two weeks, pushing the euro down. Um, especially, however, we're currently trading here at 123.48. Um, I do believe, be due to all of the price action, not going to go into too much detail, but I do believe that we're going to see 125 next, which is 150 pips away. Once 125 is broken, we could potentially see 128. So just bear that in mind on on, on the um, USD JPY. Once we are at 128, be very, very vigilant, guys, because we may see a, um, a reversal and a bounce all the way back down. However, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. So, yeah, 125, a break of 125 will take us all the way back up to 128. So, as you can see, price action seen since it's only been a year now, actually. Uh, we've, we have been above 115. We've bounced to and from our, our major barriers. And it's just a case of waiting for the price, letting the trade come to you. But yeah, even yesterday's bullish engulfing candle after all of these sloppy, messy candles um, may pave the way for a higher USD JPY. So 128, let's sit back. If it does get to that level, let's watch for potential reversals back to the downside. Next, Euro GBP. Uh, Euro GP GBP has been uh, a funny one for a long time. So let's say March. Um, probably the same as uh, the same time period in this consolidation zone as your USD actually. Now um, recently I remember I sat with a student and we analyzed and broke down this pair. Um, it was on a Thursday and this candlestick formation here, the shooting star was forming. However, you know, obviously it's a weekly, we have to wait for the weekly close, Friday 10pm. Friday 10pm came, it gave us a great opportunity to sit back, analyze and do some notes, do some uh, forward thinking into the week ahead. Now, as you can see, uh, 0.7400, we had a spike through that reversal, closes a shooting star. The week after, gapped up a tiny piece, boom, back down. Next week, gap down, came up, um, spiked back through 7200 as we broke through that. This was on a smaller time frame, this would look like a retest of the resistance. Close again, shooting star, doji, follow through. And now, and now, looking just at, at this price action here, if I can just duplicate this. If we want to just place this over here, this is the most recent low, lows of the year, 0.6930, we're currently at 0.6990. Another 60 odd pips or so to reach this low, however, price action again may, well, high probability we're going to come and reach this weekly support zone at 0.6900. So yeah, I think we do have a, a decline in our hands for euro pound if we're going to break this level we're likely to see 0 0.6798 now looking on a, um, a larger time frame the larger time frame suggests and i remember running over this way 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 back larger time frame is suggesting just off the top of my head here we could potentially come down to 0 0.6600 okay i know that's a, a key level you can clearly see it across this zone so um, especially after last month's candle as well, I see this huge, huge, huge bearish candle. Uh, now we're just getting follow through. MA's again down on various time frames. 
but yeah, more downside for Euro GBP. So I hope that helps. Looking at on the daily perspective, you can see this has been very, very tricky to actually trade. I did have a Fibonacci A, B, C up here. We didn't, we, we did not meet the D um, extension target. We reversed at this daily resistance, and yeah, as you can see, the price is just being forced through the floor. So yeah, 0 0.68, 0 0.6900s, 0 0.6800s, but ultimately 0 0.6600. So it's great to see the analysis from many, many months ago. Now um, you know, it's on its way, the momentum's back, and we just have to sit through all of this nonsense. We're not the type of traders, and our trading style is not one in which endorses all of this, you know, getting involved in all this nonsense. We want to follow the momentum, read the trend, sit on our hands until the, the trade is there. When the trade comes, we can ride the wave and take and jump on the train of opportunity. So that's that. Gold, people, gold, Oof, gold's going now weekly, okay, weekly price action. We had many, many uh, huge a a analysts from uh, major banks, you know, on these on these major websites and so on, who were saying, "Yeah, gold's getting ready to reverse. Gold is not reversing as of yet." They were saying gold is going to reverse around here, quickly whipped back down after the shooting star. We could even maybe say this is an evening star formation right now, back below the trend line, which has been, um, which has been in play for quite a while now. So. Um, as if you can just see this area here, 1070s, 1080s, which we did again predict uh, quite a few weeks ago. We have in fact, since actually did, uh, playing this recording, we have now made a new low on gold. So gold is now expected to come down to 1040s, next downside target. A break of that and we're looking at coming below the thousands. Below the thousands and um, yeah, as many, as many of you guys know, gold, we have been calling shorts on this for a good year now and many we have many exp explanations behind that which we're probably going to go into on the next technical tuesday so that's all your analysis for the week ahead let us know your feedback let us know how you get on and yeah happy trading and look out for all of the fundamentals for the week ahead Bye. <laughs>